Alright, well hello everyone. Um, I decided to um, do some screencasts of um, our programming uh, in order to make sure that you guys all are, all are following uh, because sometimes we go through, uh, you know, a little bit fast in class um, due to the limited time. So let's uh, start with uh, and see how we can, um, you know, read data into R and manipulate the data um, in R. That's also gonna, this screencast should be helpful for you to uh, work or to start working on uh, assignment number one. My phone is ringing, so I need to turn it off. All right, and um, let's get started. Um, so, um, Let's open our studio, and of course, if um, all right, that's our studio. So first of all, we need to create uh, a new document, our script. All right, I'm gonna save it. Um, say I'm gonna save it on desktop. R load data dot R. Okay, so the data that I want to read is actually in uh, on my hard disk. It's it's uh, saved uh, um, as a dot CSV file. I saved it on my desktop under this folder. It's auto dot SV. Uh, um, so here, here's the data set that we want to read into R. We can notice that we notice that there are some uh, cells that have question marks. Uh, this means that their data is missing. We will see how we can uh, deal with that in a bit. So let's uh, read the data here. Oh my God, the tables are on. Um, First of all, before we read the data, we have to let R know where the data is. So in R, if you guys are in R Studio, um, you might need to uh, go to the files tab here and then um, open and search for where your data is saved. My data as I said is saved under this folder here so I'm gonna choose this folder and then it's gonna show me here what's inside this folder it's called auto.cs auto um, this doesn't mean that uh, R already know what's the uh, you know where your file is saved. You have to specify what's your working directory in R. If you want to make the directory that you selected right now as your working directory, you would go for more and then set as working directory. Of course, you can write a code to do that. And notice here what happened: a code has been run in order to specify the directory and it says set working directory set wd to this uh, location now uh, we are safe to read the data if you don't do this step um, and even if your code is right and if you try to run your code and you didn't specify your working directory r is going to give you an error that uh, it's not uh, um, able to read the data so let's get started with the code um, i'm going to write some comment here so we are loading data into R. Again, comments, once we have a hash uh, tag here means that even if you if you run this line, it's not going to produce any output because it's just text. Um, so um, I would like to name the data auto and auto is equal to, um, I'm going to read the file, so read.csv, that's a function in R that reads files in CSV format. Of course, we can read files in different formats, and if you want to know how to read uh, Excel files or TXT files into R, uh, you know, um, you have to look for that under the help menu that you have here. But for now, we are, we just need read.csv and since it's a function we need to open and close the brackets now what goes into the brackets suppose that again I remind you if you forget how what goes into the bra pre brackets all you need to do is to press on the tab key on your keyboard and then that should give you the options uh, or the arguments that go inside this function we have to specify the file the file name uh, we don't have to specify the path because we already told R what's the path, so we just give the file name. And then header is to tell if the file 
has a header or not. In other words, if, has the, if it has the variable names at the first row or not. Because if we don't specify whether there's a header or not, R is going to treat the first row as data and it will include it in our analysis and sometimes, you know, of course, we don't want to include our the names of our variables in the analysis. So let's get started here. Uh, the first uh, argument is spec to specify the file name. Since it's a name, this means that it's a text, so we are going to put it between two quotations. And uh, notice that it's going to be the same exact thing as the name that we have here. So it's auto.csv, comma. A second argument, well, we already specified the file. The second argument is header. You can, uh, well, of course, here you can specify that this is file equal, but you don't have to if you put it in the same order uh, as it comes uh, in the function. Header, we will, you know, if, if you notice that auto, when we, when we will open the file, it has a header, so we are going to say that this is true. And let's see what else. Separator. If we are, you know, if it's separated by comma or not, but this is by default, it's going to be, um, uh, you know, comma because we are saying that this is .csv. Um, so if you want to specify that, that's fine. If not, you can leave it without doing this. Um, and then um, another thing, if you notice that the missing values in in that file are, you know, uh, uh, specified as uh, a question mark. So if you want to tell R, you know, that once you see a question mark by reading a question mark treated as a missing value, then all you need to do is to add this argument, na.string is equal to question mark. So what this tells R is na stands for missing values, right? So na, the string for missing values in that particular file is question mark. So that's how R is going to treat any question mark in that uh, file. For, um, file. So, and now we can run it, and there was no error. It tells us now that it saved into uh, the memory a, an object called auto, which is, which is a data frame. It had 397 observations with nine variables. Let's try to look, you know, in what's um, um, inside this file. Now if you just type auto and run it, it's gonna have a flood on our console now because we have 397 observations. But we can look at what's at the top of that uh, file, or sorry, that data frame, head of auto. Head is an R function that gives you the first six observations and then you run it. In this case, you can you know get, get an idea of what's in your File. Um, another uh, another thing. Um, let's say that you know. Okay, so now R is going to treat the question marks as missing data, um, and uh, let's say that you want to get rid of these records that have missing data. So you would like to save auto or auto or overwrite auto um, in. Uh, by omitting so na dot omit um, auto so na dot omit it's a function that omits all missing values in auto or in, in this case all question marks and then save it or overwrites the data in auto so let's run this and now we you know if you see that the number of observations have re are reduced from 397 to 390 now, say that you would like to know what are the names of the variables in your uh, data set. So you just say names of the name of the data set auto, which is this name here. This name is not this name. Uh, so what you are specifying in these, uh, in these uh, functions is the name of the data set that you saved in R. So it tells you all of the names of the variables that you have. All right. Let's do some graphics on uh, this data. So graphics. Um, let's try to plot, since we have cylinders and MPG, so 
seven darts and MPG. What we are trying to do here, we're trying to try to plot a scatter plot um, between for um, for cylinders and MPG. It gives us an error here. Why? Because uh, as we said in class. There's no object called cylinder. If you look at the workspace here, there's no such object, right? But cylinders uh, and MPG are inside auto, so you need to specify the data set auto dollars and then the name of the variable that will go to, you know, and access the cylinders. The same thing for MPG auto dollar MPG that should produce the plot that we have here. Very good. Um, another way we said, um, you know, in class, that in order not to do, you know, these dollars uh, every time, you can just say attach the date name of the data set auto, and then when you run this, you should be able to directly access the variables without the dollar sign. So plot auto, uh, sorry, uh, cylinders and MPG and it will produce the same plot. All right, now if you want to produce a box plot, notice that this is, it, it, it could be visualized better in a box plot because we have cylinders, we have few values of the cylinders, like we have three, four, five, six, and eight. We can only produce for these. So, uh, but, but since cylinders, if you look at cylinders here, they are saved as numbers, right? You know, R is going to think that this is a numerical value, but we, if you want to treat it as a categorical value and look at categories instead of num numerical values, then we can transform this into a, a factor or categories. So we can again override this cylinders is equal to as dot factor. Now, since we already attached the data, then we can use cylinders here. Otherwise, we have to say auto dollar cylinders. But again, we attach it. So now, in this case, we are changing cylinders, just not in the data set itself, but um, um, we are saving it from the data set and putting it in this variable called cylinder. If you want to say cylinders factor, all right, it created this variable here. And it's now it's a categorical variable. It's not a, a numerical variable. Uh, if you try to plot um, cylinders factor versus miles per gallon, if you specify the factor first, which goes for the x-axis, so here on the x-axis goes the factor, and uh, the numerical value. Uh, MPG here goes on the y-axis that's going to produce box plots instead of scatter plots simply because we have one of the variables a categorical variable otherwise it will create scatter plot like this so let's try this now it created the box plots that we have here so uh, plot you know function this is the beauty of R beauty like the beauty of R you can use the same function to create different Things. For example, plot here, we used it to create a scatter plot if the data was numerical. It's smart enough to create a scatter plot for that. If you tell it R that it, the data is categorical, one of the variables are categorical, it's going to create a box plot. Uh, there are other, uh, you know, uh, we can add to this here. Uh, notice we can go to the next line and um, we don't have to keep, you know, going on the, uh, on one line. Uh, you can add, um, uh, you know, xlab is equal to cylinders. Again, cylinders is text, so cylinders. And ylab is equal to mpg. And then if you run this, that will create these labels. Um, we can add a title to the um, to the graph by saying main, which is the main title. I am a box plot. Of course, you choose something more creative than my title, and you know that's a good visualization uh, technique. Anyway, good luck. Let me know if you guys have questions. Thank you.